Hi folks, well something nice happened to me this week. I was contacted through YouTube by an eBay and Amazon seller called Drock, D-R-O-K. Um, I think they're more than just a seller because they have products with their own logo on the screen and they have products with their own logo on the front. But anyway, they asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at one of their buck converters. They'd seen my review of a variety of boost converters and it's the sort of thing I like looking at. So I happily agreed and they've shipped me one of these things. And I um, thought we'd have a look at it. So, I haven't opened the packet yet, so I'm not sure what we're going to find inside. Well, a fair idea, it's going to be a little buck converter. But it's um, smaller than I thought it would be, looking at the photo of it. Quite a compact little unit. And very well packaged as well. Quite neat little unit. Let's have a better look at it. So it was wrapped in their business card which says their URL is drocking.com um, but here's the unit itself so as you can see it's quite a compact little unit. Um, we'll get that under the microscope and have a better look at that now. So under the microscope you can see we've got a couple of these TO220 packages up at the top here good size heat sink on them, nothing on the far side of the heat sink so quite a lot of area to spread the heat over we've got a soldered on fuse there we've got a 50k trimmer pot um, see if I can get the numbers off those TO220 packages later we've got a couple of smoothing capacitors on the input uh, 50 volt rated and we've got three capacitors on the output 50 volt rated and on the underside of the board, well, first thing I notice is we've got a bit of a solder residue here. Um, these connectors have clearly been hand soldered on after the rest of the board has been manufactured because we've got a dual side surface mount board here. Oh, interesting, we've got a PWM connection there and something for an over voltage protection Zener diode, which is quite interesting. Got a couple of unpopulated pads there. Again, a bit of there's flux residue here, that will clean off easily enough, but uh, would have been nice to see it cleaned off in advance. And uh, interestingly we've got a couple of pins here labelled V in and V out, or possibly those pins, but those pins correspond to a fan connector on the top. Um, see if I can get those transistors for you, if you can work out what they are. Like X L S E M X L Semi. Yes, that's the manufacturer. Four O One. And our other transistor on the opposite side is X L S. PO45C. Okay, that's enough looking. Okay, so looks reasonable enough anyway. Um, let's power it on and see what we can get out of it. So, just looking at the website for this, or looking at the uh, Amazon listing for this, our specifications say input voltage 4.5 to 30 volts, output voltage 0.8 to 30 volts. Output current 12 amps max, rated at 8 amp, peak at 12 amp, 100 watt. If enhanced heat sink, heat sink can reach 200 watt, which I guess is what the fan connectors are for. Um, operating temperature minus 40 to plus 85 degrees C. That's a very good operating temperature down to minus 40. Runs at 300 kilohertz and efficiency up to 95% if you get it just right. Short circuit protection with current limit of 14 amps. Over temperature protection, automatically shuts down the output. 
reverse polarity, oh, no reverse polarity protection, okay, and wiring V in input, V out output, uh, no surprise. So, I've got the converter here hooked up to my bench power supply here, which is putting out 12 volts at 1 amp. And reading the voltage we're putting out on this fancy multimeter here. So, I'll turn it on and see what happens. I've no idea what voltage it's set to currently. And there we go, we seem to be getting 8 and a quarter volts out of there as it arrived. Um, get my little twiddly screwdriver. And see what we can twiddle. So this is supposed to go down to 0.8 volts, I believe it said on the specs. Uh, 1.25 volts, that's the bottom limit, that's what it said on the specs. So I'm just going to set that to... There you are, so I've got it set to 1.5 volts. And I'm going to vary the input voltage now. Now this thing said from 4.5 volts as its minimum. So 4.5 volts and we're still holding. Let's try dropping that down a bit further. Then. Four 4.3. Still holding it. There we go, at 3 volts we've dropped out. Let's see where we come back on again. Yeah, so we're down to 3.3 .3 volts there and we're still just about holding our output. 3.4 volts, so not bad. And our maximum input voltage on this unit is 30 volts. So we'll go straight up to 30 volts and, well, we're still holding our 1.5 volts on the output. Now, I only just noticed we've got an LED here to show us that everything's cool. Right, here's a nice difficult load for it. These are, they're quite clever, they're dual fans. They've got uh, two different fans with different blade pitches at the front and the back. And I scavenged these out of old computer servers. Um, each one of these fans can take 1.1 amps. So here we've got 8.8 .8 amps in total there. Um, they run on 12 volts and they make a hell of a racket. So I'll just stick them up there so we can still see the screen. So with six fans, we're hitting the current limit on my power supply getting them started, so I'm going to have to switch to a different power supply. Now, I've had this running these eight fans for about 10 minutes so far, and I just want to show you input voltage 14.7, input current 6.8 amps. If you multiply one by the other, it gets you to 99.96 watts of power that we're feeding into this 100 watt rated converter. And, uh, just to see how we're doing. So one of the heat sinks on this one, but you can't actually see it on the camera. One of our heat sinks has reached 45 degrees. The other one's reached 82 degrees and is still climbing. And as our temperature has been increasing, our voltage is dipping a tiny bit, but I mean, we've lost 0.17 of a volt and we've gained 60 degrees in temperature. But I'm just gonna leave this running and see if this temperature stops climbing at some point or if the, uh, thermal shutdown activates, so we'll come back to that in a bit. And we're still running away here and we've hit 86 and a half degrees there. And it's a good job they've used 105 volt rated 105 degree C rated capacitors in between those heat sinks because we're getting quite toasty there. But they're still working okay. Leave us going a bit longer, see what we get to. Well, we've been running for a good 45 minutes now with a 100 watt load on this thing. And you can see this one heat sink's now hit 96.2 degrees, but that's about as high as it's going. It's basically stable, stabilized now. The other heat sink's at 55, and we've dropped a quarter of a volt or so off our desired voltage. But I'm gonna call it quits on this test here because it's so noisy, and I've been listening to this for an hour. Well, 45 minutes. Ah, oh, 
so much better. And you can see our voltage has come back to 12 volts now, we're not under load anymore. And our heat sink is slowly cooling down. So, can it do 100 watts without extra cooling? Well, yes it can. And uh, I moved the fans out of the way just to make sure they weren't blowing a breeze on there. But um, interestingly, I've been measuring this fan output while this test has been going on. Um, there's never been any voltage on there at all. I'm not sure that fan output actually does anything. Um, certainly doesn't seem to be temperature controlled. I'm just getting a reading of zero volts when I put a multimeter across there. So, not sure that's actually wired in on this particular board. But yeah, we got 100 watts out of it. Let's try a few more things. Mmm, smells of hot electronics. Something I've just noticed, this inductor isn't actually stuck down at all. Um, although I couldn't hear any switching noise from it, certainly not over the noise of those fans. Um, you know, it is potentially susceptible to vibration. So it uh, would have been nice to see a, a blob of glue holding that in place, or a blob of something that can take the high temperatures holding that in place. But, you know, not too unreasonable. Just a bit of a pity. Okay, so I've now got us running a much more moderate load. We've got a 24 volt string of fairy lights there, but I've still got the converter set to 12 volts, so they're not lighting up very brightly. Um, we've switched back to our nice high quality linear regulated power supply, which has got an incredibly clean output. And I've got the input and the output now hooked up to an oscilloscope. So the blue trace on the bottom here is the input voltage from my linear power supply, which is theoretically a very clean voltage, but you can see I'm picking up quite a lot of noise just on the wires there, and if I squeeze the wires it has an effect on the trace. The yellow one on the top is the output voltage from our converter. I've got both the traces on the scope AC coupled, so we're only showing differences, we're not showing the DC offset. And you'll see when I attach the converter, the blue trace, which is our input, you can see a lot of noise on that line now. Um, the pulses that you're seeing are each time it switches the converter on and boosts a bit of power through the diode and through the inductor. And the yellow trace is the output, which is remarkably clean. I mean, that's absolutely impeccable, that output. There's none of the switching noise at all visible on there. So they've obviously got their filtering absolutely bang on with that. Really quite impressed by that. So, overall, how did we do? Well we passed every single test with flying colours. Um, gets a bit hot running 100 watts through it with no extra cooling. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to put that in any kind of enclosure, um, not with 100 watts going through it. But yeah, it took everything I threw at it within the specs. Um, I didn't check the efficiency rating, but you know, I'm given the rest of the specs way up, it's uh, all good. Um, it'd be nice if this fan output was connected or if there was a bit more have an idea what to do with it because they've left some unpopulated pads on the back of it as well so I suspect there might be a little voltage regulator to go on the circuit board there but um, yeah overall pretty good going well done Drock oh and I have to say um, these Drock people they've no idea what this review is going to contain I'm not being paid to review this or anything and the first they're going to see of it is when it goes up on YouTube after I've finished editing it together but um, well done Drock it gets a thumbs up Cheers folks, see you next time.